This program is intended for mature audiences. Parental discretion is advised. A student finds himself enmeshed in a murder plot with a seductive professor. Oh, and Santa makes a cameo. We're talking, they're playing with fire. Hit it. It was 1984. Michael Douglas and Kathleen Turner romanced the stone. Van Halen jumped. Optimus Prime was the hottest Christmas toy, and Sybil Danning seduced a student in order to inherit a fortune. I'm your host, Jerry D., with another episode of Totally Rad Christmas, the podcast that talks all things Christmas in the 80s. Toys, movies, specials, music, and fads. If it was gnarly during Christmas in the 80s, we got it covered. Now, joining me are three Totally Rad Christmas all-stars. From the Cult Film Club, it's Sean, Jamie, and Pax. Guys, what's happening? What's up, Jerry? Nothing. I'm just very <laughs> excited to be here. <laughs> so very excited, yes. Watching bad movies. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, this, yeah, this one uh, is definitely something else. Uh, I was telling uh, Pax a little while ago that I had never seen it, and I had just found it on like a list of Christmas movies that are not really Christmas movies that you might want to watch and it's, it's something it's not really christmas even it's definitely <laughs> something <laughs> this is like um this is like that that website that used to it was like mr skin or whatever that would show you like yes. the exact time stamp <laughs> when there were like boobs on screen in a movie this is like yeah. the exact time stamp when santa shows when santa, up for... yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's right <laughs> mr santa yeah <laughs> Uh, but before we jump into this, I have a couple of questions. It's a brand new segment I call Hit Me With The Toaster. So without thinking, just the very first thing you guys can think of, I want you to hit me with these answers to these questions. So what would you say is your favorite 80s movie? Man. <laughs> just, just first uh, thought that comes in there. I gotta go Karate Kid. <laughs> nice. I mean, Monster Squad. Uh, I, I'll, <laughs> right. I'll have my nerd cred taken away if I don't say that. Uh, <laughs> I think so. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the first thing that popped into my head was Back to the Future. So, right on. Okay. What about favorite 80s TV show? Ooh. It's probably got to be like Who's the Boss, maybe t- sitcoms. It's classic. For me, I- I'm going to go ahead and say Airwolf. That, that's mm. like the one hour long action show that like I can never, I never get tired of watching it. Um, I don't know. Just love it. Right on. Yeah, I, I probably along those lines for me it would probably be Knight Rider. Um, yeah. I just like I found myself. I, I still watch episodes of it, and like I, I can still. I love it. I still. Those are oh, man, fantastic. Okay, favorite '80s song. <laughs> when in Rome, the promise is up there. Oh, nice. That's <laughs> you don't hear that one a lot. <laughs> Played at our wedding. Yeah. Very cool. Um, I'm gonna go with uh, Stan Bush's "The Touch." It's you know that it's my go-to. Yeah, that whole soundtrack is killer. Man, like what's funny because I just made like this whole playlist on Apple Music called the Awesome '80s, so, so I was loading it with '80s stuff, and it's like <laughs> so I have all these songs running through my head, and you can I only like pick one text. I can't pick one. That's the problem. <laughs> there can only be one. Sorry. Yeah, I understand the assignment. The problem is I don't know that I could do the assignment. So. <laughs> okay, just one that pops up off of the top of my head. I will probably say I'm just trying to think creating the list. Okay. Um does it count if Bon Jovi wrote the Young Guns 2 song in 1989? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Works yeah, for me. Sure. Um <laughs> it'd probably be uh 80s something from the first album of the Beastie Boys is probably gonna be <laughs> that, that works. Yeah, as you can tell, I, I play pretty fast and loose with what constitutes Christmas <laughs> and what constitutes 80s. So yeah, that's that's totally fine. Um and finally, last one, favorite 80s toy. Management and Ninja Turtles. Score. Specifically Transformers Sideswipe. Sideswipe, okay. You gotta love the uh, red Lamborghini. <laughs> nice. Oh, nice. Yeah, uh, probably the the whole G.I. Joe Real American Hero 
Um, like that whole line was great <laughs> specifically in that line would have been a big the, line. Uh, the, yeah, the specifically probably my favorite was the the jet airplane. Now I'm trying to remember air striker. The sky striker. Sky striker. Sky striker. Sky striker. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that one was probably my favorite. Right on. Yeah, I had that one. It had ace. We yes, had like, ace. Had the, the flight suit, but it was like kind of puffy. It yeah, like the Michelin Man. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it was not yeah. unlike the uh, the guy that would go in the shark, the water one that also had like the big bulky. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <with the>, exactly. <laughs> side side thought, real quick. I I wanted this guy striker so bad when I was a kid, uh, yep. but my my folks were like, "Nah, he doesn't really want that. We're gonna get him something that's gonna wow him." And they they actually got me the USS Flag. Oh, whoa, whoa. and I hated it. <laughs> really it was literally the worst toy a kid could ever have you can't move it it doesn't do it's anything huge. yeah, it, yeah it just sits a, there it's like furniture yeah it took up an entire room <laughs> it does yeah because my best friend growing up had one and i was like so jealous we i would bring my well i mean i would bring my gi joes <laughs> over and we'd play you know so i had the sky strikers <laughs> i, I would have oh, nice. i would have traded it for a sky striker in a heartbeat <laughs> <laughs> nice <laughs> Well, thanks for letting our listeners uh, get to know you all a little bit more. Uh, Great answers, great choices all around. But tonight, we're actually here to talk about their playing with fire from 1984. Playboy sensation Sybil Danning and Eric Brown, the star of Private Lessons. Just when they thought they had it made, someone starts playing with their lives. Now, they're playing with fire. They're playing with fire. This movie was, uh, it was something else. It Something. Yeah, <laughs> it was. <laughs> it's like the best B-movie late at night. Roger Corman Cinemax film you could ever find, I think. You know, <laughs> it's it's right there. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> it wants to be so many things and it just <laughs> wraps every all these genres up in one little bow. And uh, it, it, I rather enjoyed it. It's weird, too, <laughs> because there's like these very specific like subgenres in the 80s. Like you have the the young guy who's getting romanced by or romancing the older woman. You know, yeah. he, the, the main actor in this Sean's is actually in. On that one. Yeah. Well, you know, Harold <laughs> and Maude, you know, that was that was a thing right. for me. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, there's like, you know, like there's that specific subgenre. But then there's also like the uh, the American Giallo. <laughs> A, like horror sub genre which is you know it, there's not right. a ton of them but there's you know just enough so it's weird how it kind of like mixes and matches all a bunch of weird niche <laughs> sub genres it really takes a turn there mm. like yeah I, you know you, you're expe- expecting a little more plot and intrigue and then all of a sudden it's like oh no just somebody shows up some rand and spoiler alert turns out to be like a rando that's kind of just related <laughs> jamie totally called so it while we were watching I, it. I was getting very strong soap opera vibes as we were watching this <laughs> and i'm like you know what there's gonna be like some family member out of nowhere and he's yep. the, like it totally happened it's like a crazy bart from the one episode of the uh the simpsons treehouse of horror where there's like the other bart <laughs> that's a good one who or what is Hugo? Mm, I'm afraid we haven't been entirely honest with you, Bart. You see, you have a brother. So I have two brothers? Lisa, please. Yes, Bart, you have a twin brother. You see, when you were born, there was an irregularity. A monstrous irregularity. Ah! Ah! Hilarious. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, and, uh, and okay, I'm going to get it over with now just because this is a Christmas show. There's not really much Christmas in it. We see a Christmas tree twice and the killer dressed up as Santa for some reason once. And like, that's it. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, there's admittedly, there's more Christmas than when I covered Death Wish 3. Yeah, I was actually very confused. Like, I I didn't know if it was like actually Christmas because it's in California. So you can't freaking tell. right? (laughs) But then also, I didn't know if like. It was Christmas just in that one room because there was a lot of childhood things in there because like right. the kid was like mm-hmm. like a neglected illegitimate child and with mental issues. So like I didn't know if like he was trying to create like a happiness like a happy world for himself or something, and that's why there was a Christmas tree. So I mean, no, 
was he ripped from his parents on Christmas Day? <laughs> I, don't I mean, know. that's like a lot more thought that you put into it probably than the actual writers did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that was that was absolutely my takeaway, Jamie, was that uh, that room was kind of a preserved room from yeah. that guy. It's like his and, happy place or something. Yeah. And I thought they doted on him. So they'd kind of put them all like made it however it was and then just left it there. That That's how I took it, too, is like it's not really Christmas. It's probably summer. But uh, like they kept that room the same. So but but it still makes it weird that that guy showed up as Santa once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What was that about? It's like they spent the entire movie trying to like throw you off by having like the pant legs and the shoes of the the main character like like, the killer's wearing that costume so you're always wondering and then you see literally everybody wearing those pants and those shoes in one scene like three different people together (laughs) yep i was fully expecting to like the coat of armor in the basement to come alive with the like the killers in there scooby-doo moment yeah I would have a loved lot of that. fake out moments in this movie. <laughs> yeah, there's there's so many red herrings in this movie that it's like a bad seafood restaurant. It's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not not one cat jump moment. I totally thought a cat was going to jump out somewhere or the dog or something. They didn't pull that one. Mm-mm. I was going to say there's definitely a lot of fun tropes like, you know, the, the lady tosses him a beer and he opens it and of course it's, you know, squirts all over his bear. <laughs> all yep. over him, yeah. <laughs> But then that's the other thing, because when it's with the kids, it's almost like it's trying to be like a fun teenage, you know, high school sex comedy kind of thing, too. Yeah. So it's like that plus the the suspense plus the weird, you know, Silent Night, Deadly Night twist. I mean, it's just <laughs> overly complicated. But... <laughs> yeah. And then there's just like everyone is hot for like the dude from Leave it to Beaver. Like that's who that guy reminded okay, me of so much. It's like a Jerry Mathers. Like he is the nerdiest, dorkiest guy. And he's like this sex god in this movie. And I'm like, what? He's like the nerdy kid from summer school. Yes. <laughs> the one that's actually yes. like a halfway yeah. decent student. He is. Well, and didn't he? Didn't this kid, uh, Eric Brown, I think it is, didn't he actually yep. star in like another a previous like yeah, private like, lessons? Private lessons. That's the one. Yeah. Private lessons. Yeah. Yeah. So and that's what this this kind of started off like. That is like like what you were saying is like the first ten minutes. It's like you think it's going to be like another like private lessons or yeah. uh, like private uh, private school or like one of these other kind of cheesy Skinamax kind of movies, mm-hmm. right? And then then it like you it, we show shoehorns in like you know maybe a little bit of tension and erotic thriller and. And then it shoehorns in a slasher movie. It's like, whoa, where are we going? <laughs> okay, the slasher bits were the worst. <laughs> I, 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 love that, I love that they did it, but I agree they were not done very well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they were like my favorite parts out of everything. When he's supposed to be hitting her with the bat, and every time it like, <laughs> oh, it every awful. time it and like someone's her. just shooting her with the ketchup gun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and she's just like, no, no. It's like, okay, if someone's hitting you with the bat, like, you're not saying anything. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Please stop hitting me with the bat. <laughs> it's like the take they took was the take was like, all right, let's do it at half speed so everyone knows what we're doing. And then That's they right. did it. They're like, all right, you know what? Print it. Let's go. Yep. Or it's like, um, it's good. It's, it's like when Mr. Burns was like, like trying to attack, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. And he's just like, ow, ow, <laughs> ow. Yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> it's exactly that. But then, like the stabbing, also the same thing. It just, oh, it, yeah, it was bad. The <laughs> machete <laughs> across the neck. That one was yeah. great. It did not penetrate. It clearly did not penetrate. No, no. I was shocked when they shot the uh, the grandmother in the back of the head. Like, that yeah. was the one that was like that pretty was really brutal. Yeah. That was my favorite part. I think that was actually like, <laughs> the most believable death. <laughs> both of the both of the old ladies the extra yeah. step and shoot the tv with the preacher yeah, on it. Exactly. Like, someone, yeah. Someone yeah, needs to was... sh- i i i honestly <laughs> thought he was gonna shoot the dog like i thought the dog was a goner um i did too whole, yeah that whole scene with the two old ladies and and the dog like that shocked me like yeah i didn't like he shoots her in the chest and then he shoots her in the cheek and yeah <laughs> then he shoots the other one in the back of the head i was like whoa this is where we're going okay <laughs> <laughs> well when he strings up uh george the gardener yeah like mm-hmm. up in the window you know you see the same shoes and you think oh, and he's, he's the hiding shoes. there yeah. yeah yeah and then they open it again and he's like strung up all you know like scarecrow style yeah uh, i was like okay that's not where i was going with this now you're kind of <laughs> michael myers in it i guess but yeah it was just odd choices but i in a weird way i kind of really like this movie <laughs> yeah yeah definitely kept us guessing like every 
you know, 20 minutes or so, we're like, oh, it's it's totally her husband. No, wait, it's no, the best yet. friend. No, yeah. wait, it's the girl that's obsessed with him. <laughs> no, wait, like we just have it, we kept having like that same conversation like 10 times. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, I totally thought it was Sybil Danning for a while as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, yeah, totally. Because she I mean, seemed way too nonchalant she, when he was accusing her. I was totally her. looking yes. for like the chest size of the killer. I'm yeah, like, totally. if that's her, she had to tape Being those things down. down. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's even a scene where like she leaves her car and she's wearing the jeans and the shoes, and it's like she yes. doesn't run around in those Nikes. There's yeah, no way. Yeah, no, there's no way. <laughs> no. They don't make Nikes with heels high enough for her. <laughs> no. Well, and they even show her at some point in the movie running in high heels, and mm-hmm. which, first of all, I mean, that's yeah. like a crazy she, skill I could never have. But and she <laughs> kept up with the younger kid. Like, <laughs> I was like, he's dying out there, and she's running in heels, catching up to him. I'm like, well, it's Sybil Danny, bro. I mean, I mean, it's, it's, yeah. totally. <laughs> it's Sturba. The, the this kid. Let's like, just prove this kid did not deserve Sybil Danny. Yeah, right out of the <laughs> gate, I'm like, what the. F is this woman doing as a college professor? <laughs> she has at this her own yacht. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like jet setting around on this yacht <laughs> in this gold. In, in, in the Bo Derek bikini. I'm I got. Like, I got to oh, say yeah. though. Okay, this was like that time in the '80s where bikinis looked awful. And so, like, yeah. she turns around yeah. and it looks like she's kind of wearing like a diaper. Like that's yeah. how how loose it was. I thought, yeah, okay, this it was... didn't look great. It's yeah. that weird, like, like two flaps of like tan suede. They were so big. <laughs> and they weren't cut correctly. Yeah, no, they, they were, they like, sure they were boxed up. Yeah, I don't know. And then I love the switch over when she goes to school, and then all of a sudden it's pearls and the hair is back. Oh, and yeah, she's got glasses very on. Demure. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. If we're sticking with Matt Groening, it's it's very much like when um, Fry dates that. Uh, that lady um what is she she with all the rules and the red tape you know and she's uh, like dirty yeah, boy i don't oh, yeah, i can't yeah, remember that's right i don't yeah. know what she's i vaguely I need remember to revisit, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Futurama. <laughs> admit it fry you're a slob <laughs> a dirty filthy slob <laughs> dirty boy dirty 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 <gasps> yeah no she 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 was so crazy and just again it's like if you're if you're the so they, throughout the story, you get little bits and pieces of the relationship between her and her husband. You find out that she was a student of his that, mm-hmm. you know, like he seduced and then like they knew that they were going to get rich at some point. And they were just kind of coasting, waiting for this Biting inheritance to come through. Right. Mm-hmm. Yet in the meantime, she got her doctorate and became a professor. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> well, don't like they say they've been together for like 20 or years or something, like right? Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was still though. It's like if I just, you know what? Before we get this inheritance, I'm just going to become a doctor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And gonna... teach college courses. <laughs> teach <Yeah>. college courses. <laughs> it was what Ocean View College? Is that what it was called? Ocean View. Yeah. Ocean View. Yeah. It's so I bad. I saw no views of no oceans. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I did not either. <laughs> Uh, although I guess there had to be something uh, if uh, it she had like a yacht. High school. Like, it, really <laughs> did. it was some podunk community college. I was going to say that it, it, it did. reflected my community college experience that I that I had. I was going to say, yeah, it looked like high school to me. I was like, this whole that's thing what I thought like at school. first. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. the kid does not look old enough to be in college. I'm like, that is not a college. The, the kids yeah. in general, like the way they were behaving, just was very high schoolish. I don't mm-hmm. know. I mean, granted, like I said, that that was literally my community college experience like i got in there and then the first week i was so disillusioned like i'm paying for this <laughs> 13th grade baby exactly yeah it's fun this is one of those movies where there's not like a whole lot of info about production or anything so there's not really like things to point out as far as the backstory of it all except that it's kind of a remake of this dude's earlier work from about 10 years you know before mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. called the teacher ish not really yeah Yeah, so i was i was sad that in the imdb page there wasn't even like a quote section like no one loves this movie enough to have sitting down like sat down and like like done quotes from the film or whatever and submitted them to imdb it's like no no one cares but we got a song in this movie that drops the titular line of the movie right three times times. right away three times they really milked that track let's just be friends okay you're playing with fire jay what do you do when the only sound is the beat of your heart tearing you apart with its pounding? Where do you go? You can't run away from a love that is wrong, but the feeling's so strong that you stay. Just said you wouldn't stay, but love taking you higher, 
disco-esque. Like when the when the movie first started, I was like, I don't know, like that's what you first hear, and mm-hmm. I was a bit taken out. Like, what? like I just didn't understand. I did not understand. <laughs> well, it, it, <laughs> the song you know? I think was actually written by the composer of the movie, so I think it was one of those where they're like, let's let's save some money by just writing our own song. You know, we don't have to pay any rights. <laughs> we'll just do it ourselves. Yeah, it worked out. We'll, we'll just pull out. dialogue out of the movie and use it as lyrics in the song. <laughs> like, not only do we have a song that drops the title, I think the character actually dropped the title like within the first third of the movie. <laughs> yeah, it was real quick. If he doesn't, that, that girl that's obsessed with it him says it like four times. Yeah. She keeps yeah. saying, you're playing with you're fire. Playing with <laughs> fire. And then she tells her friends, they're playing with fire. <laughs> I love a good title drop. And, that was a good one. <laughs> and what the other dude's you? like, I need a pizza. <laughs> Mustard yeah. and anchovies, man. <laughs> <laughs> mustard and anchovies. Mustard and anchovies. Why, why does the big guy always have to have disgusting pizzas? Like, there's always <laughs> like it's like Shaggy. You know, oh, he's not fat, but like it's usually in these movies, the big guy always wants a pizza and with <clears throat> disgusting like anchovies. That one girl or, didn't seem to mind. Yeah. yeah, that's true. No one can really complain. Good for him. <laughs> these are movie laws, though. You can't have an oh. overweight Star Wars uh, X-wing pilot without naming them like Porkins or <laughs> right. Oh goodness, yeah, it's that kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah Monster that's right squad. <laughs> name's Horace. bacon yeah it okay so the relationships in this movie were like just bananas um so there was the diane who's you know sybil danning's character we get her husband michael who's her was her professor i guess the for the last year he hasn't even touched her which is what drives her to jay the erectile dysfunction scene was <laughs> <laughs> awkward yeah i mean yeah well the whole movie is <laughs> well, yeah. every, awkward. every sex scene was awkward every single sex scene was awkward. uh what's the kid's name he's just like uh, smiling Jay. asking questions like dude he's like hey, a cold no. dead fish in every <laughs> single sex scene he just lays there with no energy and i'm like the hottest woman in the world is on top of yeah. right now dude, what are you doing? do something yeah he just has this goofy this grin is on his neat face. the whole yeah. time like like Hey, so I can't believe we're really doing this. Yeah, yeah, you know, you're right. He's asking questions. She's going to town, and he's like, "So do you do this often?" <laughs> she, yeah, yeah. She was like, "Thank God for her," because I was sold on those sex scenes because of her. Like Just he was her. contributing yeah, yeah. nothing, but she was all into it. Yeah, she was. Totally. She was definitely, definitely into it. I did read that this was her favorite, or, or the role that she thought she did um, her best performance with. Which I guess says something about the okay. rest of her performances. I was gonna say, like, is the rest of her career like soft porn? Because like this was totally how every soft porn I've ever seen starts. Kid I mean, comes over, does some work. Yeah, it I mean, a lot yeah. of it is. A lot of it is. A lot of it is. Yeah, I, I was telling Pax. I remember her most from um, Howling Two. Your sister's a werewolf. Yes. That's okay. That's kind of where I know her, and from Hercules. Those are like my two that I oh, really yeah know her from. Yeah, yeah, my my go to is the V television series, the TV series. That's oh right. yeah, on that. I forget yeah, mine. Name. Like I I know her from several things like this movie, which I was really happy <laughs> to see her in this. But she was in like the second cheesy Lady Chatterley's Lover two, um, <laughs> and she was in still Chatterley. Movie. Yeah, still chatter <laughs> chatter harder, and then, uh, <laughs> and then Malibu Express, which was like all Malibu these kind of yeah. yeah, all these kind of Skinamax kind of movies that showed up in the middle of the night. Like I remember her from all these things, and like so seeing her in one like the like those is just like I really like seeing her in this. And Malibu Express, that's in the same universe as um, Hard Ticket to Hawaii, I think, right? I think so, because yeah. it's one of those uh, Sedaris movies. Right, right. Yeah, Sedaris, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's a guy. I think I prefer those just because they're a little more humorous. Right, right, right. <laughs> they know. They know. Yeah, this this one, the, whoever wrote this, like, they they intended this to be way more serious than, than it came <laughs> across, and they just did not have the chops. I, I mean, I, I'm so sorry, but they, they they tried so hard. Yeah, and and but you could tell Sybil Danning's like trying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, she's giving it her all when she's not, you know, taking her top off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know what? She's she still got, giving she it her all it, when yeah. she's taking her top off. <laughs> yeah, I guess she's. Yeah, she is giving it her. She's all. giving it all. <laughs> she <laughs> saves the, the movie. That is the most present in this movie at all. Times. She is. She saves the movie. I think the husband is pretty close. Oh, I think he yeah, kind of gets it a little bit too. Yeah. He's right there. <laughs> Another of uh, the miniseries alum. He reminded me of, um, oh gosh, I, why I can't, I'm blanking on his name now, from Monster Squad, the cop dad. Oh, uh, Stephen Mock. 
Yes, Stephen Mock. Oh, he kind of yeah. had like just looks. He looked a little bit like him. That's all, really. Yeah. That that kind of like like slightly haggardy kind of good looking, but not so good looking that you're a B list actor. <laughs> you're still right. kind of in the C list. Right. <laughs> <laughs> At some point, so you're going to make a full moon pictures movie. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, and so there's a, th- that's the main cast. Supporting cast, we get Jay's ex-girlfriend, right? I think they, yeah. I think they say they slept together like once or something. Uh, right, yeah. and she got too serious, and yeah. he was like, whoa, back off. Yeah, dude. this guy yeah. is fighting off hot women, listen, yes. right? Let me tell you. Like, <laughs> exactly. I, I, when, make when it that make scene, sense. When that scene happened, and that, like, because you think you don't, like, he hadn't gone into the teacher's room yet, you didn't realize, I mean, the extent, I mean, you, I mean, you, you knew where it was mm-hmm. going, but at the same time, like in the story, like he hadn't, you know, right. done anything with the teacher yet. So like when he's like, <laughs> he's like turning her down and she's like the queen of Jordash and <laughs> like literally like they would, <laughs> I don't know. Like she's the yeah. Kelly Kapowski of that. She had a really hot car too. She was driving a Mercedes yeah. convertible. <laughs> that he's flipping around in. Yeah. And then she's like she, totally stalks him though. You know, oh, where yeah. she like takes pictures of him on the yacht. I mean, it's, like, this is one of my favorite, like, I, I wouldn't know if you'd call it like a movie mistake moment, but there's like these, um, these perspective moments where like, there's like lazy perspective. It's like when, um, when you want to see a flashback sequence and they'll, or like or something that gets filmed on a TV, but they show it from you know, from like, from a character's perspective from earlier in the film. So like, it's literally just the same footage reused as if there right. were a camera there instead of the character. <laughs> um, they do that with this one where she's taking pictures of them on the yacht and that, and like a couple pieces, like from like across the bay, right. Where she's yeah. like, a telephoto <laughs> and we were like, how'd she get those photos? And then she's got photos from like literally on the deck of the, the yacht, like from right above them. <laughs> it's like crazy. Well, how did that happen? <laughs> it's a drone, obviously. That's right. <laughs> the little Very helicopter from Hard to <laughs> Right. So yeah, exactly. Sex, you see, they didn't notice she was right there at the window. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he was so nervous because she was watching the whole time. <laughs> There's another cut of this film that went completely somewhere else in that scene. <laughs> that was definitely shown on Cinemax. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Totally. <laughs> Uh, so we get those, then we get, I guess the next major characters would be George, the gardener, who's the cousin of the yeah. mom, right? It's Michael's mom, who's like the heiress. She has all the money. And, and so my, like, I have a question about this is like, again, this is where like the movie, I feel like it's like, it's trying to plot super deep, but at the same time, it's, it's not like not succeeding. dropping any actual information. <laughs> right. Right. Is he also the father of the, like. The, the 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 second son the, what it the, sounds the, like the right, yeah. so it's like it, yeah it was yeah. It was like the mom into her cousin or was that just a cover like yeah this is, this is my cousin yeah <laughs> well, I mean, great, great question <laughs> yeah. great question i don't know if we actually can answer that question but... oh i don't i think it's impossible to answer yeah i but, think it's yeah. all about fan I mean, I guess you could take some clues. Like, I mean, she, there was like a little thing there. It's like she invited him for dinner and then she got mad at him. And then, you know, there is something there, but you're right. It's like, (laughs) they don't actually answer it. So you kind of have to go your your own. This is right. We have to do the work for it, for the movie. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so he, yeah. So we'll just say for today that he, I guess was, was her cousin. And there was some sort of incestuous thing going on, which resulted in, (laughs) Uh, a bird. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna call him bird. bird. Yes, <laughs> it was the uh, I guess Michael's brother, uh, illegitimate. He didn't know he had him. Uh, sent off to Switzerland for some sort of mental thing. As and you do. as you do, yeah, yeah, as you of do. course, yeah. And uh, spoiler alert: he's the killer. <laughs> <laughs> Which made no sense. He because lo- wasn't he supposed to be like older than Michael? Maybe well, I mean. They, the when they were doing like the baby photos in the book, it's like, oh, here's Michael when he was one years old, and it's really black, you know, it's like black and white. From they're the like old timey photos, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then this, this is his. Oh my god, he had a brother that he never knew about, but it looks like it's the same era from like the 40s or the 50s. But he's like a 20 year old kid, <laughs> right? Yeah, that's, that's, that's what. Yeah, they're like dressed in these. Like, yeah. and... They're these like overly fancy like 30s kids clothes. They're like, <laughs> like what? How the old little is curl that? of the hair in the front, <laughs> right? People, they're so out of touch. They don't know. This is what they do. I know. I guess, yeah. It, I, yeah, I, I just that was driving me crazy. I was like, okay, they are not age appropriate. Exactly, age appropriate <laughs> right. siblings. Yeah, unless your father's <laughs> Sylvester Stallone's dad, where he's still having kids in his nineties. But uh-huh. yeah, well, I mean, I guess could be because uh, the dad died what a year prior, something so, like that. So yeah, who knows? Yeah, 
But uh, I just thought there was a lot of just goofy, stupid stuff in this movie. Uh, like Jay, he runs away in broad daylight from the house, and the grandmother <laughs> woman is like watching him out the window with his bright teal shirt on, and he comes back <laughs> later, a few hours, and it's still clothes. daylight. And he's wearing the same clothing. Oh, she'll never see me up on this very tall hill I'm standing on. Like <laughs> it was just really funny. It's not like she had a scope on her gun or anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, what a, like what with the hardware they had in there, man. They had hey. a gun. Cabinet we're packing like, he thinks he's yeah. just gonna show back up to the house with the teacher and like just waltz in like hey i you totally <laughs> didn't yeah no this do i look familiar well, to you? He, <laughs> you he still had the same yellow ago. backpack right, right. Yeah. yeah yeah and why do it in broad daylight that was just i, I like i don't know <laughs> i plot i guess yeah I like, <laughs> he thought they're old they can't see me anyway so <laughs> well i like how he, he sneaks in and he's got his yellow backpack and he's just kind of hanging out and then he drops later on he drops his helmet and when he goes back in he picks up the helmet puts it back in that backpack <laughs> it's like come on man like this be is, smarter about this stuff. right <laughs> i know right this is a whole this is a whole nother weird rabbit hole it's like why did he have a motorcycle helmet with him yeah, yeah. he drives yeah, a, a 65 yeah. mustang <laughs> yeah he, yeah, you know, he didn't come you know he, he actually had someone drop him off there like what <laughs> What what is happening? Why does he unless have- he unless he thought like he didn't have a ski mask, so he's like, so I'm just going to bring <laughs> the next best. Yeah, 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 he thinks yeah. he's the exterminator. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, they they can't tell who I am with the song. <laughs> yep. So okay. So basically, I guess Michael and Diane hire Jay to break into his mom's house, scare them so that they'll want to leave, and they can put him in a retirement home, so that Michael and Diane can move into the house, and then. What, uh, or take declare over, them legally incompetent, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. you put yeah, them in a, a home. Yeah. Was so like, they, oh, yeah, crazy. so they can they can take over the uh, they can become the uh, uh, I what it's called the power of attorney or whatever. Yeah. Right. How does that work yeah. exactly? How do you get so I, scared? You're just going to decide to leave your million dollar mansion. Well, if you scare them enough, and then the police it's, come, but then they can't prove that anything actually happened. You could be like crazy woo, yeah, you're crazy <laughs> lock them and up the, the guys come in the white suits with the nets and <laughs> the net the big I know, i'm totally nets. taking yeah. notes on this here you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> right yeah keep some ideas here oh yeah this it makes it zero sense <laughs> yeah yeah i really don't know um i think they mentioned maybe at one time declaring them incompetent so that they mm-hmm. can inherit but i yeah I might, my brain might've just been filling that in honestly. Pretty much. I yeah. I mean, that, I think that was pretty much the plan. I mean, is it a great plan? No, it's not a great plan at all. But, uh, but I don't think like, as we go through this, I mean, I think Michael's got a different agenda than what I think this plan mm-hmm. was just for Diane. And then he had another plan kind of in the back of his mind that he, I think he was trying to trap uh, Jay there. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like, make it so like, oh, this, I didn't think he planned on them getting killed, but he was going to trap them there and be like, yeah, he's the one that broke in. And then, uh, but I don't know, that doesn't make much sense either. Cause like, how's that going to get him the money? I don't know. Was like, <laughs> There's also this know. weird stuff with Michael where like, you know, he's very um, obsessive <laughs> with his wife and like, um, like lording over her and like, he doesn't want Jay to be around her and, <clears throat> and all this stuff. But at the same time, it's like, has zero interest in, sleeping with his wife or pleasing his right. wife or he can't or whatever it's just this weird like i, I don't know I, I don't i don't i'm not exactly sure what his motivations are right the, the the most fun he has is when he's just sitting at the bar with like another professor yeah telling the bartender i'm not here <laughs> yeah that was yeah. there's a great band on stage <laughs> oh that band <laughs> that band <laughs> they're amazing <laughs> what did she say something like all right you can, if you don't like it you can go hang yourself <laughs> yeah. he had like a little noose in her hand like whoa what <laughs> like okay i get it if you're like alice cooper or ozzy right. osbourne or something <laughs> but... <laughs> she was just like in, in hip huggers and uh <laughs> it's it's like, like calm down. You were at the campus pub. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Campus exactly. Pub. <laughs> yeah, totally. Also, I noticed on the wall in there they had um a poster for David Bowie playing there. And I'm like, David Bowie never played there. <laughs> <laughs> no. Not, never. not even they, 1984, David Bowie. They stole that poster from another place where he actually played. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, or maybe they teach Photoshop classes. At the- <laughs> there you go. <laughs> rudimentary newspaper layout design <laughs> something yeah there's no way uh, there okay so we do get uh so it turns out okay, in a weird twist bird is like jay's roommate or something 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was... I thought they were yeah. in a dorm together, but it, it apparently it was an apartment. So I was like, man, this like, is the biggest it, dorm room I've ever seen. Huge, like, it was like, huge. Like, it's like, it's like an, an old warehouse. warehouse loft. Yes, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> and the yeah. door is like this big industrial door that opens outward in a mm-hmm. weird... It was totally... Like, whatever school they filmed it, it was like totally a classroom or something, and they just dressed it up. With yeah. The, you know, said yeah. Dressing to make it Definitely. Like yeah. yeah, that was a crazy... Uh, <laughs> crazy apartment well michael comes while she's there and she like hides in like this little room she has the curtains and <laughs> yeah she's just the behind the curtain thing that was great <laughs> the kind of stuff my daughter does when she hides and, then from yeah, yeah. and he's like yeah. wait a minute i'll conveniently leave for a minute so you guys can exit out the back and go right. back into the apartment then, <laughs> i know i saw her car outside but maybe she right left. yep mm-hmm. nope she's not here i don't know what you're talking about okay <laughs> i won't look around at all <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy. I'll walk through your giant apartment and not look at anything. <laughs> not look and at then anything. Leave. <laughs> yeah, but she did have a pretty nice car. Although I guess it's Jay's uh-huh. car now at the end. Well, so there's two different cars because I think right. one of them is like an. It's like is that another? Ne- I, we yes, just did it's blind another date. I felt like Nissan. The cars were kind of the stars of the show in this movie. I was more interested in them and that sweet truck with the color. Oh yeah, on the, the, the oh, garbage yeah. truck was. Yeah. That was nice. Yeah. I, for for a hot second there, I thought his Mustang was actually the same Mustang from Fright Night. No. I find it so oh, fascinating wow. that within a two year period, like there's two different red Mustangs that are like covered in Bondo and everything. It's like, <laughs> oh my god, is this like a reused prop or something? Like, did they did Fright Night use this? From, <laughs> yeah, that'd be like the most amazing thing ever <laughs> if Fright Night reused that. Right, I know. I was like, oh my god, is this is gonna a, win me over on this movie. <laughs> is there an IMDb of Cars? No, yes, there be. is. Oh, there, there is? is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's like yeah, IM, it's IMC DB or, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, something like that. Oh, but they but they are wrong. If you look at this movie, they say her car is like an like an AMC. Some it's like another completely different car that looks nothing like her first car. Is that like Sean? Like you it's said, like a Nissan, Nissan 300. Or it may be a Datsun. I think it was right or before Datsun, they switched. Yeah. yeah, but it's pretty much what we saw in Blind Date on our last episode. And mm-hmm. uh, and so, but it says it's like another kind of car because I was looking it up. I was like, I knew what it was, and I yeah, like, I know. I know at the end she has a Ferrari. And then that's a Ferrari, yeah. yeah that she, so I don't know she what happened to her it. Nissan, which was pretty... That was a sweet Nissan. It I don't was, know. It, it, does, it does say that uh, Jay's car was a 1970 AMC Hornet yeah. sedan. Yeah, they said his car was an, was an AMC, but I was like... Right. It's a Mustang, Someone right? wasn't paying attention. It's a Mustang. It is 100% yeah. a Mustang. What do you expect? I don't really, yeah. really think I people are diving <laughs> deep in this film. <laughs> I know this film is. I'm not. sure there's Hold someone on, on a car on. forum somewhere that's just like <laughs> angrily ranting. Film is too much. Let's <laughs> this flick. Yeah, this is more like a flick, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> but, these, these are the kinds of movies that when you watch them, they're like, "Wow, this is like it's, you're getting through it," and you're like, "Oh man, there's definitely some fun stuff in here." But mm-hmm. but then, like for some reason, if you find yourself watching it again, like it will become weirdly quotable at that point. <laughs> like you'll find the worst lines in the movie, and it'll be fun. And then by like the fifth watch, you're like a super fan, and then you want yeah. vinegar syndrome to put out <laughs> like a four K re- restoration. It's it's a a fire. Put out the director's cut. <laughs> It'll grow on you. I could see that happening. I don't want to test that theory, but I can. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, no, no. <laughs> I love these movies always seem to get awesome, like awesomely cool looking cars. So like this one had multiple ones. I had the Nissan, I had the Ferrari. Um, I think there was a Mercedes there. And that that even that beat up Mustang is kind of cool. Um, like, but, you know, other ones, I mean, like I, we mentioned Malibu Express here. Well, that mm-hmm. that one had a DeLorean in it. Yeah, and not yeah. only that, it was a painted red DeLorean, which I've wow. never seen a painted DeLorean like that. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, I love that they, they keep pulling up. Like somehow they're like, we, we won't pay for anything, but we're going to get a cool car somehow in this movie. Knight Rider was huge. So, I yeah, guess, yeah. I, guess I mean, if you just fun. look at like, you know, between like Airwolf, Knight Rider, Street Hawk, yeah, the Van we, and the A Team, we did like uh, vehicles, Dukes of Hazard. Yeah, we, we, Voltron 80s was, yeah, <laughs> Auto I, love, I love the yacht too, honestly. I enjoyed all yeah, the that. Was, the yacht that was, was the, nice. The Jillian, yeah. <laughs> the, the, Jillian. Oh, the Lillian, the Lillian, sorry. yeah, That's yeah, right. yeah, Lillian. The named after the, the mom, I think. Come on, Sean, show some respect. <sighs> <laughs> that was quite the odd. And she was like, I love how like she had him, Jay, there. Like, obviously, she's got an ulterior motive where her and her husband want to use him. Right. But, like, <laughs> at the beginning, I just thought it was purely a sex oh, thing. Oh, yeah, like, we thought that's where it was going, right? Is he yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, right. 
But well, I, just, I just love that she has him there under the auspice of like re all the wood. <laughs> varnish it all, man. Varnish yeah. It all. yeah. Sure, I'll have time to do that. Take you to uh, varnish this room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oof, what about these like, two chairs? That's a half a day or a full day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you want to do it right. I better get to work. Yeah. It seems like that where I wish they would have had like a lot more like punny wordplay stuff where it would just be like, <laughs> like half a nothing day. but I don't double know if entendre. I can last that long. That, that yeah, whole scene yeah. should have been double entendre. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, maybe a more seasoned writer, <laughs> a veteran, maybe, probably a couple more passes work. at the script. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. More, would you say polished? <laughs> <laughs> Zing. <laughs> the, the mom and the, and the grandma are killed. And they have to quickly, I don't know, figure out an excuse. They tell George the gardener that he's they're going to Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> that was just <laughs> For a like couple weeks. Odd yeah. specifics like, that I really like. Sleeping with her, I would know if they were going to yeah. Hawaii. She didn't <laughs> tell right. me. She always tells me. She always makes sure to tell me and update me on where somebody is that you don't you don't need to know about right now. But she always <laughs> updates me on where that but, guy is too. <laughs> <laughs> he might be my son. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's living like, with well, the, hey, we're not going to need you we don't need to come around until they come back so you, you can just stay away for a couple of weeks it's fine <laughs> that's right nothing not weird about this at all yeah stay away yeah. i also love that um they use the dog as a subplot in this movie for both cuteness so like when when the killer is killing like the, the grandmother and the mother and then like the dog like hides itself in the cutest box known to man yeah <laughs> it was like cute, don't yeah. shoot me please yeah and then later when it's all like it's S&M all tied up, tied up yeah. <laughs> like, with like, like a, a muzzle and I don't know, yeah. it's just crazy. How long but it like, had been like that? I right? But it was like crazy. the loosest tie ever. True, yeah. <laughs> but there, there's a scene where they have the dog, like, like when the killer comes in, um, it's right after Jay had left and the dog was the one that found him, barked up a storm and all this mm-hmm. stuff. And then the killer comes in and the dog doesn't bark. They make a point to show you that the dog yeah, knows this person. Yeah. Right. He's cool with this person. Right. But the reveal is that it's somebody that's been the gone for 20 know. years, has yeah. never met this dog, <laughs> has probably never been in this house. <laughs> yeah, valid point. Like not within the last 20 years. <laughs> yeah. That's what I think, though. I thought the room was the his room, no? That he's well, when he was a baby. Yeah. But yeah. then they pulled him off and sent him to Switzerland for 20 years. Oh, okay. I thought he was like still According there. to all the know. paperwork that Jay oh. found all yeah, co- over. Conveniently, right? Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was like a flowers in the attic situation. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I thought that too. Flower in the attic. Flowers yeah. in the attic. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That was about the, the acting level that we got. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. Film, so. And with the, you know, with the creepy grandmother worried about her inheritance, I totally got flowers in the attic vibes. Oh man. And then we get the uh, okay, so so there's all that. We we get the climactic end where they Diane and Jay witness Bird killing Michael, you know, with like the lamest stab ever. Yeah. <laughs> yes. They like follow him. They follow the killer back to like the house. Like, why would you follow this killer? Just <laughs> call the cops or something. <laughs> you have like literally the perfect scapegoat now. There's a killer on the loose. Mm-hmm. True. <laughs> I don't the know. only thing I could think of is that they were both relieved that wasn't either of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so you didn't do it, and oh, okay, I didn't do it. <laughs> well, let's get them. I think. I think at that point there was like a weird thing where the movie just kind of like the air starts getting let out, like in a balloon, <laughs> where it's like, okay, so it's definitely not anyone we've seen before. And right. It's yet another person. Mm. I was still kind of in the back of my mind thinking like that pissed off maid was going to pop up out of nowhere. And oh, yeah. 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 The, the one that drank bar. Yeah, the one that like <laughs> when there was drinking. She's like, you bitch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally. She did. She should have showed back up. Yeah. Another red herring though. Yeah. There was a lot of them in this movie. There, there really were. <laughs> there was the surly gas station worker. We didn't talk about him. Yeah. yeah the that boss guy. of uh, the boss, yeah. Jay. I'm going to fire you <laughs> this time. <laughs> Don't come back. <laughs> I mean, it. playing with fire, like uh, <laughs> he kept he kept like using every excuse to drop the word. Fire. Use the word fire. <laughs> it's quality writing there. You know? It is. I mean, <laughs> if you repeat it enough, it just becomes. Exciting. It is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, his friends are like the most random assortment of friends thrown together mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. It, it, yeah. Yet at the same time, it's like. 
okay, we need we need the heavy set guy that's kind of funny but also kind of gross. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, central <laughs> casting. Do you also have the guy that can literally just blend into the background? It's like another one of these. Birds, but like yep. they all have decent girlfriends. It's yeah. Confusing. Yeah, and they're all like super horny. It's like, yes. oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, they are. You got to have that the, in a movie like this. You what, know? Were we, what was up with the dude's eyes when he comes in the apartment? He's got like pink eye or something. Oh yeah, like the killer guy. Oh, like, he yeah, the he's, he totally had pink eye in that scene. Yeah, I thought he got. I thought he got hit. I thought it was like a like he got oh, a maybe. shiner or something, but. Like, but then, like halfway through the scene, it kind of disappeared. Maybe so I was the like, actor "Yeah." Came down with pink eye, and then <laughs> maybe <laughs> I had to come up with something on. The I got spot. it from the craft table. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> no, he got it from Simple Day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, he's man. lucky. That's all I did, honestly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, for real. Yeah, that was weird. Just. This and then Christmas, a Christmas podcast, people. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I, I will say real quick that the one friend that's the, the heavy set friend, I did like seeing him because he is the most obnoxious and the the like the first person in a Friday the 13th movie that you really want to get killed. Yeah, in part five. Die, yeah. Yep, yep, that guy in part He's five. That guy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so it's always fun when you see that guy pop up. <laughs> Which that and guy, then, but nothing happened to him. It was, it was no, yeah. I know nothing. He did almost happen. had a statue dropped on him. I totally thought he was going to be the end. yeah, and they were driving away without him. And he right, yeah, him. and then all of a sudden he just turns around and, and catches up. Yeah. Thought, oh, I was ha- I was happy bummer. to see that guy. That guy showed up in a couple of my favorite movies. He's in Midnight Madness and he's in Zapped. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. So, like I was happy to see him. He yeah, look super familiar. Yeah, yep. and the hair is kind of distinctive. Yeah, yeah. totally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's another one of those where like. I thought they were going to go full slasher and then they nah, pulled yeah. it back on me. They did. I was like, yeah, that would have is... been like a crazy awesome change. Like all of a sudden it's like, just turn it on its head. But, yeah. Nah. This is again, this is why it's in that weird niche subgenre of like the Giallo. Like, I don't know how familiar you guys are with the Italian, like, like I'm humanoid aware, slasher yeah. guys. Yeah. The Giallos where mm-hmm. the, the, the killers never make sense. They, they, they put you on this path <laughs> where it feels like it's, it's an Agatha Christie mystery. <laughs> <laughs> and someone's killing someone and it's got to be this guy no it's this guy no it's this guy no it's you always this, the most random guy that was like never in the movie before and is a weird <laughs> psycho there's, there's another movie like this it takes place out of school um it's one of my favorites it's a made for tv movie it's got um wow what's her face from your favorite john cusack movie in it real pretty girl with the curly oh, dark hair yeah yeah diane franklin Di- yes diane franklin oh um mm-hmm. it's called deadly lessons but it's the same deal it's like you get this you know murder mystery slash kind of slasher plot throughout the whole thing and it keeps you throwing red herrings at you like so this movie reminded <laughs> me a lot of that one and if you huh. liked this movie for some reason i recommend <laughs> deadly lessons <laughs> I was gonna say, I'm probably a lot better out. made than this movie i mean yeah <laughs> the, uh, the other one you threw out when we were watching well, this actually, was a night for- in Yes, yes. You get, no, you get the, no, you go ahead. But, uh, oh. A Night in Heaven yeah. was, oh, is, yeah. is like a much better yes. version of this uh, movie. Of the hot that teacher, Leslie hot teacher know, student, with students, sex is way murder better. mystery. There's some, a like, husband that's you get, trying like, to kill someone. scenes in there. It's amazing. <laughs> I think uh, How Did This Get Made covered that on their podcast. Yeah, and that, oh, that one's know. crazy because I think it's John G. Alvinson, the, the Karate Kid Yeah, the Karate director. Kid director directed that movie, which is why it's so good. Rocky, Karate Kid, A Night in Heaven. He has an interesting <laughs> filmography. That's, <there>. Yeah, <laughs> it's quite a trajectory there. <laughs> Not quite your standard. Yeah, no. Yeah. Uh, okay, so long story short, Michael dies. The killer ends up getting killed. Uh, they reveal it's Bird, and then Sybil Danning and Jay run off together to Hawaii. To Hawaii. <laughs> The only thing they didn't do was the um, freeze frame ending where they're both doing a high five at the same <laughs> oh, time. Oh, that would have been amazing. <laughs> yeah, I'm in. Let's do it. I'm all in. <laughs> yeah. We'll reshoot it. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. Not very Christmassy. I liked the Santa Claus thing. It was a <laughs> yeah. weird bit thrown in for some reason, but it was entertaining. And uh, But I think overall, the movie was okay. Nothing... I mean, it was bad. Okay, never mind. It was bad. It was a bad movie, but yeah, it was entertaining enough. There's a fix when we when we get into one of your segments at the end. I'll I'll reveal my fix for this movie that I feel like would totally turn it on its head. Okay, I well, think it's... if uh, if it had a better soundtrack, it could be elevated like by at least ten percent. Yeah. yeah, 
Yeah, I well, can see that. I, I mean, I will say I enjoyed this movie, but I mean, there's like I, a solid six minutes of Sybil Danning naked I, in this movie. I mean, yeah, exactly. That's yeah. what I'm saying. You, you know, yeah. there's other reasons for and it. And it's a part of this whole. It's a part of this whole '80s erotic genre from right. Cinemax that, it, like, I already like am in kind of into. So it's like it kind of fit really <laughs> nice in there. And I love that they just kind of like it's just like they were throwing stuff against the wall to see what sticks. To see what sticks. Yeah. I enjoyed that. So, but I totally agree. I mean, it's not a great movie. If you're not into that kind of stuff, then this is going to be a horrible watch for you. But, you know, it's so on that note, then it does make me wonder, what would you guys say would be your hap, hap, happiest like moment with this movie? For me, it was the the realization that two of these cast members weren't V. Because anytime that I can think about V or get reminded of V, the, the miniseries from the 80s, then I, I am a very happy, happy person. <laughs> so when I saw them, I was like, oh my God, in my head, I'm like, oh, it's like a V reunion, even though it was at the same time, I think. <laughs> All right. I had kind of already said mine, but I, I really like the scene where the grandmothers get their, the one gets her head blown off <laughs> and the mother gets shot in the chest. Because I hated them. I hated them on site. Like, as yeah. soon as I saw them, and I'm like, oh, uh, these they were like, yeah. like, And then they totally, you know, confirm everything I thought about them by, like, making fun of the poor people. And <laughs> they were, Like, yeah. this is exactly what old rich people do. They just sit around and make fun <laughs> of do. people that have less. Because mm-hmm. they have nothing else to do. Exactly. You know what? Those people over there, they don't have a front door with 15 metal studs in it. <laughs> That's right. We do. How dare they? <laughs> that house was decorated so weird. That was, was actually, like, I'm going to throw that in as my half French colonial, mention. Half yeah. medieval. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's my yeah. honorable mention is the mansion itself because I think it's almost like a character. It's so bizarre. They've got like this weird star molding situation. Yeah, going and that on. star God, molding. The moldings in that place were Amazing. insane. They were great. It remi- so <laughs> there's this like uh, adventure game I love to play. Called, well, it's from the, it's old. It's from the nineties. It's called Phantasmagoria with this whole yep. weird mansion with everything decorated so weirdly inside. That's what it reminded me of. And I'd love to have like just a, a simulation of this mansion and just go exploring. <laughs> <laughs> well, their basement was like huge oh, yes. yeah. it was ridiculous it was such a weird like every room in there was like a weird disconnected thing you could tell was a different set yeah but, uh, like the, i agree the mansion was fantastic with the star molding and uh the the oddly fancy gun cabinet they had in the den oh yeah <laughs> yeah it, it was it was pretty great with the they had the phone they had that fancy kind of weird French looking phone, phone. Yeah, yeah. Warning, my, yeah my parents had that phone my, like, my parents literally. Did too. yeah and <laughs> it was just like seeing that was just like oh my god we had that phone it was like a, a status symbol you know you you have to redecorate french country so you gotta go all in and you have to have <laughs> yep. that phone because it's french it is <laughs> oh man what about you oh, uh happy hap, happy yes yep. um I mean, I would say for me, like Sybil Danning is like kind of the hero of this movie. And like, so like, I mean, I want to say every time she's in the shower is kind of the, the happiest <laughs> moment for me. In, which is like three times. Which is a lot. Three. <laughs> considering yeah. this is a movie, like there's a lot of times she's in the shower. But uh, <laughs> but but I also think just in general, like just her performance is just like she's in. She's in it to win it for this yeah. movie. And she I think she's is great. just <laughs> extremely confident. I'll say that. <laughs> Very, she just yeah. does not mind getting naked right away. You know, <laughs> in front like of like drop of a hat, sixty yeah. percent of the cast. I'm yeah. yep. not even shy about it. But yeah, I agree, Pax. Thank her you hair, for being honest. <laughs> her, her hair was like next level eighties. You know, yeah. it, was, it really like was super kinky. Oh yeah, I she mean, had she took the crimp iron to that one. She did. <laughs> exactly, it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think for me, um, I mean, yeah, Sybil Danning is is very nice, but I mean. You know, I'm a Christmas guy, so I got I really like the Santa Claus the Santa pop out. The Santa pop out. That's on brand. Yeah. That's on brand. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, but now we come to my favorite part of the show, which is a little segment I like I call Gag Me with the Spoon. So this is where we do our best impression of our least favorite part of this thing. So, you know, just kind of set up the scene for us as the guests. I'll let y'all go first. And uh yeah. We we brought it up and like I'd probably say it made me laugh, but it's it's so awful. Like the very first sex scene between him and Sybil Danning and <laughs> how awkward it is and how he's laying yeah. down on the bed and she is going to like she is like giving the performance on top. Right. He's just kind of sitting there smiling and he's like, so do you do this very often? You know, and it's just like this weird, awkward conversation he's having with this goofy grin on his face. And she is in <laughs> the business. She's doing the business. So yep. it's like it is just whew, that, that was like she's great. He is. The one of the worst things in this movie. <laughs> I agree. My mine revolves around that. I mean, it's 
it's her line and and like after she's given him the beer and she takes him into the bedroom and she's like well come on in I'm not going to rape you oh, yeah. <laughs> as she then that. proceeds Proceed to push to him raping. onto the bed. <laughs> and, and, and totally him. does it. Yeah. This is everything Monroe from Too Close for Comfort was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> he warned us. Uh, I just, I, I, it was yeah. such a weird dropped line. Like, really? That's where you're going to go? <laughs> I Are forgot not she said that. Yeah. Yeah, she's <laughs> telegraphing it. Usually like, I'm not going to bite or something. It's like, okay. Yep. And then she does. And it's like, wow. <laughs> Liar. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I don't know. I, there was so many cringy lines. I'm hard pressed to even pick one. But I, again, I, I enjoyed that maid. You know, she just <laughs> walked by, gives no Fs. <laughs> None. And like nothing happens. <laughs> Next no time you're fired. Whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that maid. Yeah. That was I feel strange. like these people are pretty easy targets, all things considered. I mean, they leave their basement unlocked just <laughs> all the time for no reason. They don't have it. The gardener, he doesn't check. He doesn't give any fuck. So, I don't know. It's just, uh, yeah, these people deserve to die, is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it seems like if you're the only hired help, you know, mm-hmm. maybe go around mm-hmm. checking everything's secure, I guess. I don't you know. know. Not your wife, but the mother of your illegitimate child. You know, you just want to make sure that, you know. <laughs> There's obviously you some sort of attraction there. Might as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, those are all better than mine. So, um, this is from when... Um, Martin, or you know, Bird is like chasing them down and he's trying to kill them. And he's he says something like, Only if you promise to play with me. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's right. In a weird voice. A weird, that like, was, yeah, that was the that other was weird voice. subplot yeah. throughout this movie was yeah. his weird baby gurgles and baby noise. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and he's like randomly just dying of Huntington's Korea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah just, <laughs> again, with the more complexity where it's not needed. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just a weird specific that pays off. Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> None. He's not dying of that. Said no. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, man. Um, but, you know, G.I. Joe taught us that uh, knowing is half the battle. What do you guys think is the other half? I'm going to go ahead and jump in here. Um, the other half of the battle is less is more. And the reason is, is because this movie could be fixed if Jay <laughs> is the killer and the long lost brother and everything, because that's a twist you don't see coming. But at the same time, you don't need like this other character thrown in the mix, like the the roommate character or whatever. You just have him be crazy, right? He's the you're like he's the vehicle character, but you can't trust him and you don't know it. It's because he's yeah. Well, this is where like because mm-hmm. you and I were like, oh, like is he just like he's the he's the, the Ill, like the bastard son, but also is just kind of like has this other identity as this student. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like because they could have mm-hmm. worked that in versus like we shipped this guy off to Switzerland. No, exactly right. You know, like he could have just been raised by a different family. Or and it something. would it would yeah. I don't know, it would bring more to the weird love triangle between Sybil Danning and her husband. The fact that he's the illegitimate brother and right. So she's kind of sleeping with the whole family. I don't know. It's like, I felt like that would have made this just, it would have elevated this movie just a little bit. Sleeping with the whole family. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. It's good. But yeah, less is more. Right on. What about you, Pax? Uh, knowing half the battle, the other half is knowing that Sybil Danning's not going to rape you. I mean, <laughs> But if she does, sorry. but if she does, if she you know, does, she'll just have you break into her. her if she <laughs> does, congratulations. <laughs> All I'm saying is, if you're wearing those little shorty shorts, the cut off jeans, you you were asking. Oh for my it. lord, he I'm was sorry, wearing da- he was wearing Daisy Dukes, horrible. man. Yeah, he was. <laughs> well, I mean, it's don't wear Daisy Dukes. I mean, that's like proper, you know, wood varnishing attire. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Oh man, yeah. So uh, those are all good. I said if uh, knowing is half the battle, the other half is just bringing a little noose to your concert. Yeah, you <laughs> oh, yeah. that was ridiculous. Huey Lewis and the noose <laughs> and the noose yeah. and the noose. <laughs> uh, it's been it's been a blast talking about this weird movie with you. But you know, tell me about your various things got you got going on. You know, what do you want to plug? Oh, uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, I, I'm used to you jumping in on that. Um, so. I guess us, like our our show, uh, Cult Film Club, you can find uh, online at coldfilmclub.com. We just did, I don't know, when does this go up? Uh, uh, this will go out in about uh, three weeks. Okay. So we should still have blind data. So yeah. 
<clears throat> Cult Film Club itself, our last episode was Blind Date with Bruce Willis. That is up there right now. It is a pretty fun listen. Um, and uh, we, we all had a lot of fun with that. Um, Cult, Film is just one of the sh- Cult Film Club is just one of the shows we have on the feed. Uh, we also have a Halloween seasonal show that comes in September and October uh, called Crestwood House, where uh, Sean and I and another co- co-host of ours, uh, Michael May, talk about pre-80s horror movies. Um, and uh, that's a lot of fun. And uh, I also have a show on the feed called I Read Movies, which is a movie novelization podcast that uh, I, I read a movie novelization it's monthly. I read a movie novelization and then I get on and just talk about the differences between the movie and the the novelization and just any kind of stuff they've added. Um, that's mainly what I cover in that. So we have those three shows on the cult film club feed. Uh, they're a lot of fun. If you like one of them, I think you're going to like all of them. So uh, it's a, it's a lot of fun and uh, check us out. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. The only other thing I'll add is that I just, uh, I had like a, a personal website called Brandon in the 80s that I had for a long time that I kind mm-hmm. of shuttered a couple of years ago. And I just launched my new site, which is called Plastic Rocket Pop, which is like Brandon in the 80s, just not painted into the corner of the 80s. <laughs> and I right can uh, rant and uh, rave and talk about some stuff that's a little bit more. <laughs> we can keep it contained to that site instead of spilling out onto the broader internet. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> No one, no one needs that. This is happy space, so you should come check it out. Right on. Uh, Jamie, Me? anything? Uh, I'm just all about that gangster life, you know? <laughs> uh, no, yeah, actually, I'm about mom life. That's that's what I'm, I'm about. Uh, I have nothing yeah. going on. I haven't updated my blog in I don't know how long, so I just enjoy uh, doing what I'm able to for Cop Film Club and reading the content that these awesome guys pump out. She right built on. plastic rocket pop. <laughs> hey, that's and right thank you and yeah. yeah nice yeah. <laughs> well then uh, let me just say guys go check out all their stuff you won't regret it and on that note thanks again and i'll say they're playing with fire so check us out on our social media pages facebook and instagram at totally rad christmas twitter at rad christmas mastodon at totally rad christmas at mastodon.world or our facebook group totally rad christmas malden arcade where you can make your voice known to us as well we post anything and everything 80s or christmas related and if you're feeling like jay and diane leaving for hawaii leave us a review on itunes it helps us reach more people and spread some rad holiday cheer now don't forget to check out our merch shop on tpublic.com and our super dope website totally rad christmas.com Courtesy of Tis the Podcast Elf, Tom Crow. This bird's got to fly the coop. Later, dudes. It is now my duty to review one of the worst movies of this or any other year. A movie so bad that my best recommendation for this film is that it immediately be cut up and made into ukulele picks. The name of the movie is They're Playing with Fire, and it stars Sybil Danny, one of my favorite B-movie stars, in a ridiculous story about a college Shakespeare professor, that's Miss Danny, who seduces one of her students so she can involve him in a mysterious plot. An unbelievably complicated and unintentionally hilarious plot to cheat Sybil Danning's mother-in-law and grandmother-in-law out of the family fortune before a mysterious mass murderer can kill everybody and muzzle the family dog. Their playing with fire is a complete waste of time, especially Sybil Danning's time. She specializes in Hercules Unchained and Women in Chains movies, and they all look like Academy Award winners compared to this one.